I'm going to show you how you can use Ableton Sampler to create precision engineered amens that sound like this. I'm also going to show you how you can use follow actions to generate infinitely more patterns really quickly. So the first thing we're going to do is load in an Amen break from the Rhythm Lab Ultimate Amen Breaks pack, which I'll link to in the description. I'm just going to grab this cassette one in here. We're going to work with the last two bars for demonstration purposes. So I'm just going to drag the playhead up here to free, zoom right in, make sure we're on the transient, right click, set 1.1. I'm going to make sure the loop is looping nicely over two bars. So just gonna drag this warp marker out to the end here. That'll do. I'm gonna set the warp mode to repitch and I'm gonna right click and crop and we'll just give this a listen. Just gonna do some gain staging here. Minus 18 RMS. Now at this point, I like to do some kind of very basic processing. It's quick and dirty, but it gets you good results. I'm gonna use a channel EQ. I'm also gonna use a glue compressor and I'm gonna use an RX950, a plugin by Infonic, which is an emulation of the Akai S950 sampler. I'm gonna turn these off. I really like channel EQ because it's nice and simple. It's got very limited controls and you can actually get some really nice usable sounds. My methodology for using this was that old school producers might not have had access to sophisticated EQs, but they might have had access to something like a DJ mixer with a very basic free band EQ. And this can get you some pretty good results, particularly if you scoop the mids, which I'm going to do here. Well, it's down to about 410. <laughs> Game stage. That's with. Without. Now I'm going to move on to the glue compressor. I'm going to compress the hell out of it. So attack fully up, release fully down, ratio at 10. I'm going to pull the threshold right down and we're going to get some really heavy gain reduction. So I'll just bring this up. I'm looking for the RMS meter to be the same before and after. That's a bit too heavy, so I'm just going to pull back the dry well a little bit. Now I'm going to jump over to the RX950. I'm just going to adjust the audio bandwidth. Pull the output down. Boost the gain. Now if you click on this meter button here, you can access the brilliance knob, which can help give you some of that top end grit that is associated with the old school 12-bit Akai samplers. Less is more. And that's the kind of very basic processing I do. Next, we're gonna resample. So I'm just gonna create a new channel, resampling, set it to record, call it something like Amen. And here we have our process break with the audio effects printed. So at this point, you might be thinking we'd right click and slice to a sampler, but Ableton doesn't actually have a sampler as a stock slicing preset. So we're going to have to create that now. We're going to go into instruments, pull a sampler into an empty audio channel. I'm just going to set up some very basic controls here. So turn off filter. I'm going to put voices on two. Then we're going to go over to our user library. I want to go into slicing. I'm just going to drag this in here. I've already got one saved, so I won't save that. Now we can delete this. Double click back into our break and we are going to slice transient by transient so Ableton's going to do that where these transient markers are so you might notice that there's some missing on these hits here so I'm going to command shift I and insert those do the same here and here and it's adding an extra one here so I'm just going to delete that command shift delete okay that looks good to go now I'm going to right click slice to new midi track 21 slices is right by transient, I'm going to slice it to a sampler our sampler preset okay that I'm going to get rid of this original loop Double click in here, just going to do a few bits of basic housekeeping, highlight all of these, command shift U. I want to set the quantize grid at 1 over 16, and now I'm going to click legato. I'm going to pull up all of the velocities here. If we give this a listen, you'll hear it's a little bit janky at points. So now I'm just going to go in and tidy up all of the slices, making sure that the start and end points correspond to each of the hits that we've chopped. If you've watched any of my live streams, this is something you will have seen me do time and time again.
If you're not quite sure where to line up the start and end points, just give it a try and you can always adjust it back later on. You can achieve a very similar result using a drum rack and I'll link to a video in the description where I do that. I like this method because sampler is self-contained and it's all nicely stored in one device. Okay, now we've tidied all those up, we'll just give it a listen back, see if it sounds any better. Getting there, now we're going to group it. I'm going to map some controls here. I'm going to map the pitch to macro one. I'm going to go into my filter global. I'm going to map the volume to eight. Decay, macro five. Sustain, macro six. Release, macro seven. I'm just going to name these pitch, decay, sustain, release, volume. We'll need to boost the volume a little bit as we gain staged it when we resampled it. At this point, I like to pull the break up here, retitle it master, save this however you wish. Now I'm going to pull this master clip over onto the timeline. I'm going to start doing some chops. I'm just going to quickly create a pattern. I like to work with the kick here. It's a good place to start. This really comes down to taste. Everyone likes to do their chops differently. I like to work in short phrases, double them up, change them slightly, and then repeat the process, change them slightly again. This gives nice, usable eight bar phrases, which is kind of what jungle is all based around. And the same with a lot of dance music. Just dragging out things here. We'll just duplicate that again, create some more variation in this part here. At this point, I'm just going to highlight all of these. Command J to consolidate. I'm going to rename it nothing. I'm going to pull it over back into our session view here. I'm going to turn loop on. At this point, you can do a really cool trick, which I do all the time. You'll hear it in my music. And it's very like you'd hear in a track by Sully. And that is to highlight all of these MIDI notes and just pull down the length. You're going to get these really cool staccato effects. At this point, I like to add some more variation. We'll just do it on maybe the snares here. Just draw it in four of those. You'll generally want to work on a 16th note grid. Any lesson, it can get a bit glitchy. I'm just going to draw in a velocity curve manually. Maybe one here as well. could sound really good when you just randomly repeat bits and get rid of any double hits on the same measure so that you get these cool at this point i'm just going to draw in a pitch roll on these last snares here i'm just going to go into envelopes instrument rack pitch i like to do it this way because it gives me more granular control and it's more like a tracker sound you can even go as far as pulling them down for each hit maybe i'll do something here just pull this down a fourth but this allows you to create really unique melodic phrases maybe we'll do something here put it up Pop these ones down. You can really go to town at this point. You could even just highlight it and copy, paste. At this point, I would create a couple more variations. So you've got, say, three clips. I'm just going to copy and paste some of these clips that I made in an earlier session. We'll give these a listen. You 
you can even do stuff like just copy the clip we created here and we can start it on the fifth measure which has a slightly different variation we could duplicate it again actually and start it on measure four and now we've built up this bank of clips i'm just going to use follow actions which you can get to if you highlight all of them shift tab follow actions this drop down here i'm going to click other these allow you to set actions that clips follow based on certain parameters that you can set up you can also set a percentage of likeliness a probability that they're going to occur i'm going to turn linked off and i'm going to set them to change every measure so you've got bars measures and half measures or auto measures i'm going to turn legato on this means that when a follow action is triggered it's going to play from the same point it's as if they were all triggered at the same point and it's going to skip to the next one at the measure the follow action was triggered it's best to just listen to it So you can hear there's a bit of jankiness but we can tidy that up when we record the midi i have created a new midi channel there i'm just going to take the midi from the aim and break rack here we're going to arm this to record and we're just going to set rolling eight bars is good so i'm just going to pull that over here get rid of this So you can hear there's a few janky bits, and but it's really quick to kind of go and tidy these up here. So we could get rid of that and. Maybe we just want to pull velocities up for these and do some kind of pitch roll here. You can generate loads more patterns and just rinse and repeat. Do follow actions for the patterns you've created. Create endless variations with just the last two bars of the Amen break. You've also got the ability with decay, sustain and release to sculpt the sound further. You can add more effects at this point if you wanted. I also like to use an echo with a very short feedback. Ping pong mode. You could do some interesting things with the modulation section. You set this to sample and hold or even a square wave. get some interesting effects you can also use something like a flanger is quite good just pull out this LFO section we'll make the phase zero you get towards a couple of strong effects here which Sully uses a lot Yeah, that's how I like to use Sampler to get really precise staccato amens. Drum rack is good for this as well, but in Sampler you've got some additional controls that you don't have access to, including the sustain modes, which you can select for different hits and get them to play back in different ways. Quite a cool thing to do is to find the symbol, which is on slice 20, and you can use the sustain mode forward and back. Now, if we hit the symbol, let's turn this back up. If you sustain it long enough, it will start going back on itself and get some really cool effects. Build that in with the rest of the breaks you've got. You 
can even do it on the kick drum as well. Slice one. That's the wrong slice. It's uh, slice eight. So let's do forward and reverse. Yeah, very cool. the setup now and put it on Patreon along with all the other amens that I created as part of my rehearsal sessions. There's loads more breaks and presets and all kinds of samples on there. Thanks to all my Patreon supporters. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. Thanks for watching. I'll see you around.